Colors. All right, guys, it's heating up. About to test out these art materials. It's gonna be a lot of colors flying everywhere. We're gonna try to fill up a few pages of my sketchbook and test these things out. Here we go. This might get a little weird. Oh my gosh, guys, so I'm kind of nervous, but um, I have already sampled these colors from my last Daiso video. So I'm gonna start off with the purple. This is the Daiso Craft Notebook, 50 sheets. The sheets are pretty thin. I don't have high expectations for this, but it's $1.50 for 50 sheets of a sketchbook. So, you know, it is what it is. I love these pins anyway. Oh, I can't get this one to snap. There it goes. Purple. Purple. This is Daiso Stationery. There's one more color that I didn't actually buy this last trip. This is blue green. I bought this um, the last time I went a while back and I didn't get much, just a couple of hints. So this is that color, it's blue green. Obviously I've used this one already quite a bit. <laughs> Let's see, blue, green. pages. Now I'm going to put a protective sheet of paper because I'm pretty sure this paper is not thick enough to withstand the markers. So if you saw my last uh, Daiso markers video these were the few that I got and tried out there. And now the first ones we'll try out here are the light blue gray and ash gray. Blues, water blue, ultramarine, water blue, very nice pale blue, ultramarine, very nice ultramarine, silky blue and silky green, silky blue, very nice, kind of lavendery blue, silky green. Very nice pale green. Lavender. Violet blue. Oh, that's an intense purple. All right, the last two swatches I'm going to put at the bottom because they are a couple of packages of the warm colors. Baby pink and cream yellow. Baby pink. Cream yellow. Chocolate and red wine. Chocolate. Ooh, right at the edge of the page. Wine red. And there you have it. All the colors I have. Fluently Daiso brand markers. As I stated in the haul video, these are a two pack for a dollar. I'm very cheap in price, but I think not bad quality for the price either. And these I've had for at least more than three months. <laughs> Ooh, 
pretty heavy bleeding, but we expected that in a very thin paper. All right, let's sketch something out with these babies. Uh, I'm not trying to go for anything spectacular here. I just kind of want to use all the colors together. So I'm going with some face action here, putting in some different colors everywhere, kind of seeing how they mix and blend. And so far, I think it's pretty cool. I don't think that I'm disappointed at all with how they operate. I did notice in the last video I did that there was a little bit of uh like splotchiness on the paper and i think i get even less of that splotchiness because of the smooth paper that this daiso sketchbook has all right let's try the color brushes color brushes and water brushes red and yellow We got red and yellow, light gray, dark gray, dark blue, light blue. I will start with the dark, or the uh, yeah, dark gray. It's kind of a, not bristle, felt tip brush. Still not bad on the line weight variation. Pow, 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 pow. Just playing around here, guys. <laughs> not trying to make some masterpiece, but. And a little entertaining for my both of us. Um, so yeah, that is the. Dark. Then we have the light gray. That is very light. You can barely probably see it on camera. Um, it is very light. I happen to appreciate a dark or a light gray. Uh, a medium preferably, but light gray is very cool to make subtle effects. And perhaps can be stacked on top of itself. Let's see how that comes out. Perhaps a dual layer action going on. We'll have the favorite blues. Light blue first. Very light blue. Very pale blue. Which is pretty awesome because I've been getting into the pale colors anyway. Pale, 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 pale. Dark blue. This looks more like an indigo. It's not a, a bright ultramarine. It's more like a muted blue. Um, more like an indigo than say an, an ultramarine dupe as one might say. Uh, I like indigo. It's a pretty versatile color. It adds a lot of depth to other colors when you mix it with lighter colors. Um, can be very useful for shadows and in place or mixing your own kind of blacks. And now the red and yellow. We'll try the yellow first. That is bright yellow. Bright. Very saturated, very nice. I don't know what this pattern is that I keep drawing over, but I'm just trying to do the same marks. Uh, it's just kind of funny because I can't, it's like eyeballs, like upside down eyeballs or something. I don't know. It's, um, there it is. Yellow. And the red. Not a very bright red, but it is. Pretty pigmented, pretty saturated in color. More of like a brick red. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. There we are. All the colors. Now we're going to try to put a little water on them since these are supposed to be watercolors. This is by no means a watercolor uh, sketchbook. This is the water brush. It's pretty big. It's a lot bigger than my normal water brush. So these are the Pentel aqua brushes. The Daiso water brush seems quite a bit larger. Put water in the reservoir. The same amount of liquid. I don't know if the package says how much. Anyways, here we go. Let's mark a few of these lines. I like though that it does have this little tab because these I can travel with. The caps stay on pretty well, pretty tight. They don't leak. And I have bought uh, cheaper versions of them that do leak. This one feels pretty solid. Like it has a good weight. I like the length of it. Squeeze that, I see it going in. Let's see. Oh, it's still dry. There, get some more water. Try to get it come out a little bit soft but sturdy. Alright, got a little drippage going. Okay, that should be wet. Okay, very much like a water or a watercolor marker, perhaps. Not so much a color brush where it probably would melt more of the color. Yellow. Yep, nice and melty, nice and water soluble. Oh, sorry, that was blurry. There you go, nice and water soluble. Get some of the yellow off. Try the blue. Blue, not so melty. Very, very pale. It doesn't look like it's moving much. And can't really see it moving much in the water. Oh, the dark gray. Dark gray does come off and melt. All right. Light gray. A little bit, a little bit. Can't tell if it's the wetness, the gray wetness of the paper or if it's the marker. So I'm doing the light brushing on the light gray. Apparently I wasn't recording when I did this. <laughs> so I'll try to show you real quick what I did. I have the dark gray. The light blue seems to fade pretty well. Uh, not on the Daiso pad paper, but this is watercolor paper. Then we have dark blue, still pretty staining, not very much movement, but it does come up a little bit. The red, pretty good, coming up red color, coming up from there. The yellow, I wrote yellow brush, and that seemed to disappear pretty well. In fact, I like that one so much, it seems more like watercolor. Oh, I'm so mad that didn't record. But I had yellow brush there, and then it seemed to melt pretty well, like almost gone after the first few strokes. And the other colors I had to work a little bit harder to get the pigment to spread. Doesn't seem to have done much at all. I wrote light gray, pouring the water on, I'm going to let it sit on top. Seems like maybe it'll lift it a little bit more if it gets to sit there for a while. But perhaps on everyone's mind is, can it make art? Can we make art with cheap art supplies? Well, of course we can. Let's test out the theory though right here. I'm going to use the sets of colors, three sets of colors on three small little portraits. And we'll see how they turn out.
Sag. Sag. Cinco. Honestly, I'm not mad at this at all. I mean, they are cheap art supplies. They do have a few limitations. Um, but even with those limitations on some good watercolor paper, I managed to pull out a pretty good um, portrait. Now we're going to start again, this time on a different one using the grays.
I'll admit this came out better than expected. The light gray was very difficult to use as it wasn't very melty. It didn't really react with water as much as I wanted it to, but it still came out really well. I think just working it and having the thicker watercolor paper helped curb the limitations of the brush pen and allowed me to work it a little bit further so that it would become more water soluble. And with that, the water brush is pretty much broken in. It's got a lot of colors in it and that will probably never go away. But with that, that is the Daiso Color Brush Pens in a nutshell. Three different artworks made with them. I think they came out pretty well. Maybe you can try out these for yourself and see what you can make with them. I have to say that popped me up. I'm kind of kind of excited to do another one. Uh, why don't we try another portrait with the Daiso markers? Um, I previewed this on my Instagram. You may have already seen it, um, but it is Beyonce in the very similar photo shoot from her music video, Why Don't You Love Me, which looked a lot like the picture of Naomi Campbell, which probably a reference to Naomi Campbell's photo shoot. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I love this picture and it has a, a lot of color in it. So since i don't have the exact colors that i would probably need to recreate this i'm just gonna kind of wing it with what i have <laughs> you might say this was my first mistake um but i did want to include this i you know debated about taking this footage out because i was so disappointed with how it came out but at this point in the video i am hoping that it's fine and then it's not you know tragedy struck and it was here that i realized i messed up beyonce so i'm a little perturbed by this I'm, it upset me and i tried so long look at look at me struggle here i am struggling i'm trying to put this piece back together at this point i'm trying to use different colors to hope that they well in hopes that they're gonna fix it but sadly they don't and i, I don't recover from this little fiasco and um i'm trying i'm trying to fix it but it, it doesn't work and she eventually gets darker and darker more green and more blue more you know all the other colors that I, I i don't want her to be and i i wasn't able to find i wasn't able to fix it and this hurt me a little because usually i am a, i am with going with the flow and you know working it and working with it and recovering or whatever but it didn't it didn't happen for me here so thus was born zombie beyonce zombie zombie beyonce <laughs> there you go uh it's a thing so in an effort to make myself feel better i just moved on to a fantastical subject and i chose to do natiri from uh avatar and i knew i had the colors for this at least so i could make this work and i went ahead and did that one and it came out pretty cool i like the way um it turned out i wish i would have maybe done the colors a little bit darker but i think that may be for another time this was just my daiso sketchbook after all so i think that came out pretty good for that being what it is uh cheap art materials in a cheap cheap sketchbook and uh there you go if you enjoyed that thanks for watching please like it below leave me a comment if this has ever happened to you and what you did or if you recovered at all Hope you enjoyed that art supply play. Sometimes you have to remember to keep that kid inside you alive and just have fun. Picasso said, every child is an artist. 
The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. Tell me down below if you get weird and loose and have you ever discovered things about you that you didn't know or forgot. So with that, go play with your art supplies and get out of your head a little. Oh.